Now, strict water restrictions come into effect for millions of Californians shortly as the west coast of America continues to experience a crippling drought. As California's population grows and the weather patterns shift, there's a real push to update the state's water supply system. The last big project was the New Malone's Reservoir, finished in 1979 when California had just over 23 million people. Fast forward to 2024 and we're at over 40 million. That's a 70% jump. Sure, we're way better at using water wisely now, both in cities and farms, but we can't just save our way out of this water shortage. So what's the solution? Let's dive in and figure out. Let's get one thing clear. The Central Valley is a powerhouse. Right in the heart of California, this is the most productive farming area in the U.S. Just about every inch is used for big-time agriculture. Think almonds, walnuts, pistachios, olives, cherries, and way more. If you're eating it, there's a good chance it grew here. You can see the hustle everywhere. Trucks loaded with fertilizer or diesel rumble down the straight roads, passing field after field of crops. Canals cut through the landscape, carrying crucial water from one farm to another. Cows crowd under metal shades, and their smell hangs over nearby towns. But there's a spot that breaks the mold. Right where two rivers meet, there's a patch of wild land. What once were walnut orchards are now wetlands buzzing with life. Trees tangle over remnants of levees, and animals not seen for decades are making a comeback. This is a glimpse of the Central Valley's past, a reminder of the wilderness that thrived here before it became an agricultural giant. This restored area shows us what the valley might have looked like before it was transformed by farming. Austin Stevenot, who looked after this place, points out that this lush wildscape is closer to the original state of the land, cherished by the Milwaukee tribe for thousands of years. Now, with the return of native plants, the land is starting to remember its roots. You wouldn't guess it from looking, but this wild floodplain used to be as industrious as the farmland around it. Right at the meeting point of the San Joaquin and Tuamon rivers, it once held a dairy farm and crop fields owned by a well-known local farmer. About 10 years ago, a conservation group bought the 2100-acre site, ditched the agriculture, and brought back the original vegetation that thrived here long ago. They poured $40 million into this project, not just to bring nature back, but to test a solution for the severe water management issues that have troubled California and the West for years. The Central Valley, like many parts of the West, faces a water dilemma. It's either too dry or too wet. In dry years, when mountain reservoirs are low, farmers pump groundwater so intensely that the earth itself begins to sink. In wet years, overflowing reservoirs send water surging down rivers, breaking through old levees, flooding farms, and swamping towns. The restored floodplain is a game changer. In wet years, it acts like a sponge, soaking up excess river water and slowing its flow towards major cities like Stockton. The water escapes into the earth, replenishing groundwater reserves that have been heavily drawn for decades. But that's not all. This revived wetland also captures carbon dioxide, offsetting emissions from thousands of cars and provides a safe refuge for migratory birds and other endangered species. The Dos Rios Restoration Project has brought remarkable changes to this small part of San Joaquin Valley, stopping frequent floods and shifting long-standing views on environmental conservation. However, it's just a small victory in the grand scheme of things. Agricultural interests still dominate the vast majority of the Central Valley, controlling both the land and water. As climate change intensifies the cycle of droughts and floods in California, experts are calling for more projects like Dos Rios, and they say it's more urgent than ever. But replicating Dos Rios involves more than just finding the funds to buy and restore thousands of acres. It also means negotiating with a powerful agricultural industry that has often been at odds with environmental efforts. This industry feeds much of the nation with its fruits and nuts. To truly expand the Dos Rios model, it'll require convincing farmers to use less land, conserve more water, and perhaps even scale back on production. This is a tall order, but it's necessary for the health of California's environment and its people. You can see the last century of work in the Central Valley as a big effort to make things stable. Alfalfa fields, citrus orchards, and nut trees need a lot of water, and they can't just wait for rain. Back in the early 1800s, when settlers first came to Central Valley, they found a wild ecosystem. The valley was basically a giant drain for the Sierra Nevada mountains, sending trillions of gallons of water out to the ocean every spring. During the worst flood years, parts of the valley turned into what was called an inland sea. It took some time, but eventually the federal government and the powerful farmers who controlled the valley managed to tame these waters. They built dozens of dams in the Sierra Nevada to store melting snow and use it for irrigation. They also built hundreds of miles of levees to keep the rivers from flooding. 
However, by controlling the rivers this way, the government and the farmers ended up drying out a lot of the valley. They cut off the floodwaters that had been nourishing the land for centuries. Fixing California's troubled water system in the face of climate change is a long-term task. By 2040, in line with California's groundbreaking law on groundwater regulation, farmers may need to stop using up to a million acres of productive farmland, which would mean losing billions in revenue. At the same time, protecting the region's cities from flooding will require billions more to strengthen old dirt levees and water channels. In theory, restoring floodplains like Dos Rios could be a perfect solution to the state's water issues. However, the challenge is massive, needing potentially dozens of similar projects to truly make an impact. But solving this won't be simple. California's weather patterns are shifting too. Longer dry spells and more intense rainy periods. From 2020 to 2022, we've faced some of the driest years ever, and then 2023 flipped the script with record rainfall. The reservoirs, full in 2019, hit critical lows by 2022. It's not as obvious, but the groundwater storage took a big hit during those dry years as well. This recent drought was particularly tough because both California and the Colorado River Basin were dry at the same time. Usually, the Metropolitan Water District could compensate for Northern California's water shortages with supplies from the Colorado River or vice versa. This time, both sources were dry, leading to severe water restrictions across the state, including major cuts in agricultural water use, bans on watering public spaces, and in some areas, residential outdoor watering was limited to just one day a week. California still gets enough rain overall, but it comes all at once and we struggle to capture, store, and transport it from wet years to dry ones. We need to get better at catching stormwater and spring snow melt, storing it, and then moving it to where it's needed in dry periods. With a well-designed water system, we can ensure enough water for farms, cities, and natural habitats. If we have enough stored water, we can help fish spawn and keep habitats healthy while also supporting irrigation and urban needs. This isn't a problem we can solve with just one kind of project. We'll need to use every tool we have. Yes, we must keep conserving water, but we also need to make sure we're reusing treated wastewater instead of just dumping it into rivers or the ocean. Although some wastewater discharge is necessary for natural habitats and aquatic life, a lot of it could be reused for things like irrigation, recharging groundwater, or even direct urban use. We also have brackish groundwater basins that can provide useful water once desalted. Places like the Arlington and Chino DeSalters are already doing this, supplying thousands of acre feet of clean water each year. And let's not forget ocean desalination, a proven method that can help meet the water needs under the right conditions. With a wet winter in 2023, California's surface reservoirs are set to be full this year. However, the groundwater basins refill much more slowly. Even though we have the water available, capturing and storing it for future recharge is a challenge. For instance, in December 2022, 230,000 acre-feet of stormwater flowed into the ocean from the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta that could have been used beneficially if we had the capacity to capture and store it. Similarly, Lake Mead and Lake Powell on the Colorado River are recovering slowly and expected to end the water year at less than 50% capacity. Addressing the water supply issues requires a combined effort at both the state and local levels. At the state level, we need more large surface reservoirs and the infrastructure to capture stormwater and snowmelt to transport it to these new storage areas. These are big, costly projects that local water agencies and even the Metropolitan Water District can't handle on their own. At the local and regional levels, efforts are ongoing to enhance our capacity to capture and store storm runoff. New recharge basins have been built recently, and a significant project is under construction below the Seven Oaks Dam on the Santa Ana River. We also need to adjust how flood control dams operate to allow for water storage without compromising flood control. This approach has been successfully implemented at the Prado Dam near Corona in partnership with the Army Corps of Engineers. Here, water is released only as fast as Orange County water agencies can absorb it into their groundwater basins, unless there's a high flow or a major rainfall forecast. Similar adjustments are being sought for the operation of Seven Oaks Dam to support water storage and ensure the consistent release of water into the San Bernardino Valley Basins, which are crucial for riversides, as the majority of riverside public utilities water comes from these sources and the water level has been dropping for years. We are committed to releasing two videos a week. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more visionary builds.